I'm going to go through eight hacks that you can apply to your colored pencil drawings or graphite or charcoal. I've got some hacks for everything that you can use to take your art to that next level. Let's get straight into it. The first hack will help you speed up your colored pencil drawings because colored pencil drawings can take hours and hours to complete and sometimes you just want to get something done in a short amount of time. So what can you do to really speed up your colored pencil drawings? Well, one of the main tips I have is to actually use some other mediums for the base of your colored pencil drawings. And one of my favorite art supplies to use for this are pastels, in particular, pan pastels. So what you do is you do your sketch for your drawing in graphite and then add a base layer of color with your pan pastel or watercolor or even markers. And this will sort of get a nice foundation of color saturation in on the paper. And then you can go in with your color pencils to add definition and detail and to make it look really nice and realistic. But the great thing about adding a base of a different medium is that you can quickly fill in all of the white grain of the paper, block in some basic colors, and then you can do all of your detail work with your color pencils. And this gives you great looking drawings really quickly. Recently, I used this technique to do a really nice realistic eye drawing. And this was a really quick way to do a really realistic looking piece of art. So I really recommend you guys trying out this hack. If you love the definition and detail that you can get with colored pencils, but you don't want to spend tens of hours on each drawing. My next hack is actually one of my favorite tricks for charcoal drawing. And this is actually using charcoal powder to add your values to your drawing and do all of your shading rather than using the pencils directly on the paper. So what I basically do is I use a round, really soft, fluffy paintbrush and I actually create my own charcoal powder and I brush that and add that onto my drawing using a paintbrush. And you can see that when you add this powder to your paper, depending on how much of it is on the brush, you can get some really dark values and then use it to get really light values for your charcoal drawings. And you can even use a larger brush, more charcoal on it, to fill in large areas of your paper really quickly. So this is a really effective trick to use for getting in a large background of a drawing really quickly. And what's even better about this technique is that you can easily erase the charcoal powder. It's a lot easier to erase than directly shading with a charcoal pencil or a charcoal block on your paper. When you use a paintbrush and some charcoal powder and just do your shading that way with a paintbrush, it's so easy to erase it. And you can then even lay it on top of that base layer of charcoal powder with your charcoal pencils if you need to add more detail. So I particularly love using this technique when I'm doing portraits and I wanna get really smooth skin or I want to blend out and get a nice base value on the hair. It's really quick and really simple and it helps you get really soft, smooth values. The next hack is actually a really great trick for getting accurate proportions for all of your drawings because as a beginner, sketching out proportions can be one of the hardest things to master. So what I recommend trying out is actually using your pencil as a measuring guide to help you measure out the proportions of your reference. So here you can see me showcasing this trick when I am sketching out one of my references using the grid method. Quite often you'll see me using my pencil to actually measure out the distances between objects. And then I can really easily do that same thing on my drawing paper. I measure it out on my reference and then I transfer that same measurement onto my drawing paper, just using my pencil as a tool to help me do this because it can be hard to observe it with your eyes and to guess how far distances are. But if you use your pencil to actually measure out those distances, 
then you are much more likely to end up with accurate proportions and have all of the different elements in your drawing to scale. And I use this method all of the time when I'm freehanding my drawing. It really helps keep everything on track and to the right scale. Moving on to the next hack, and this next hack really has the power to transform your graphite drawings. Because one of the main problems with graphite drawings is having a lot of shine and not being able to get your values dark enough. So what I recommend doing is using a black colored pencil. I love using the black polychromos pencil by Faber-Castell and use this to actually get in your darkest values and darkest shadows for your graphite drawings. And this technique is great because this colored pencil layers really well on top of graphite. So you can do all of your other shading with your lighter graphite pencils and blend it out and use all of your normal techniques. But then when it comes to actually adding in those darkest jet black values, instead of using an 8B pencil like I'm doing here, just a general 8B graphite pencil, which doesn't really get your drawings that dark and creates a lot of shine, which can really detract from the realism of your drawing. Instead of using that method, try using a black colored pencil instead. And here you can see I'm doing the same thing, but with my black Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. And straight away you can see how much darker this gets your drawings. It layers so well on top of graphite and you can even use lighter pressure and lighter shading to get a lighter version, to get some lighter values. And it still erases really well and you can blend it really well as well, just as well as the graphite. But the bonus here is that it gets your values a lot darker, which will make your drawings pop more and also it won't give as much shine. And here you can see me using this technique to draw a hair study and straight away you can see what a massive difference the black pencil adds to the contrast in my drawing. It really makes it pop and stand out and getting in those dark values and getting them dark enough is really key to making your drawing pop and to give it a lot of depth. Now my next tip is one for blending colored pencils. And this is just a little thing that you can try to quickly and really cheaply blend your colored pencils. So once you've done all of your layers of shading with your colored pencils, and once you're happy that you've got enough pigment and coverage down on your paper, if your drawing is looking a little bit grainy and you just want to smooth it out a bit more, what I recommend doing is going in with a tissue and actually wrapping it around your finger and using sort of medium pressure, just go in and blend out your shading using circular motions with the tissue. And what the tissue will do is it will start to smudge that colored pencil pigment and fill in the little white dots and specks of the paper that are still showing through and it will just create an even coverage and give more of an airbrushed look to your drawings. You'll still see some of the pencil lines, but this is just a really quick and easy way to just smooth over your colored pencil drawing and just to make it look a little bit softer. Now this does work better on some types of colored pencils than others. In particular, this will work really well for oil-based pencils like Faber-Castell Polychromos. It might not work as well for Prismacolors that are more wax-based, but it's definitely worth giving a go with your colored pencils, especially if you do have more oil-based colored pencils. Hack number six is all about an amazing tool that I love to use for my pencil drawings and I can't live without. And that is my Tombow Mono Eraser. And this is a stick eraser. You don't have to have this exact stick eraser. You can use any one that you can get your hands on, but I love Tombow Mono Stick Eraser. And this is great for adding highlights to your pencil drawings, to, for lifting up graphite and charcoal and even colored pencils and adding all of those tiny details and textures to your drawing. So it does a really great job at erasing your pencil shading and revealing 
some lighter values. I love using it if I'm drawing hair to add wispy flyaway hairs and just in general to add texture to areas and to lighten and brighten up certain details of my work. And it's really great because the stick eraser is so narrow and thin that it really can get in those tiny fine details. And it means that you don't have to work around them when you're using your pencils. You can do all of your shading and then just use the stick eraser to add in the highlights at the end and add in these final details. And it's really effective for this and can take your drawing to a whole new level. So this can be a great tool to use if often you make your drawings too dark by accident and you go too dark and you're like, oh, I need to brighten it up again and pull up some of those lighter details. This tool is really perfect for that. Moving on to hack number seven. And this is a great tip if you often spot things that aren't quite right with your drawing but you're not quite sure what it is. You just know that something feels off. So if you're working on a drawing and you're in the middle of it and you're not quite sure what's wrong with it but you're feeling like there might be something wrong with your proportions or your values, what I recommend doing is actually taking a photo of your drawing and you can also have a photo of your reference, that would be really helpful. And what I recommend doing is actually flip those images. And when you flip the images of a drawing and the reference, sometimes your mistakes just jump out at you and it can be really obvious where you have gone wrong because you're looking at it in a different way than you've been looking at it before. When we're looking at the same thing for hours on end, it can be hard to see our mistakes. Whereas when we just flip it, we might suddenly see something that we didn't spot before and we can notice where we're going wrong. And this tip is particularly useful if you do digital drawing. A lot of digital artists do this. They will occasionally flip their canvas to look for mistakes. And my final hack is if you wanna create some really subtle highlights, often normal erasers, they just create far too harsh of a highlight. They pull up too much graphite and sometimes you just wanna lighten it a little bit. And a great tool for this is a kneaded eraser. And I recommend anyone that does graphite or charcoal drawing, I recommend for them to have one of these in their art kit. Because a kneaded eraser is great for just lifting a little bit of that graphite and charcoal. Not lifting too much and just allowing you to get those really subtle highlights that are particularly useful to add for skin if you just want to add a little bit of a shine to the cheekbones or the middle of the nose or the tip of the nose, something like that. If you wanna add a subtle highlight, using a kneaded eraser is great for that or a clean bit of tissue will also do a great job at just lifting up a little bit of the graphite. Whereas, as you can see here, stick erasers or normal erasers are often too harsh and pull up too much graphite. So those are eight drawing hacks to give a go. Let me know in the comment section which one you're most excited to try. And if you haven't already, Next, watch the other drawing hack video that I did recently where you can learn seven more hacks that will just make your drawings so much easier. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.